What's up guys, welcome back to Daniel Talks Football right here on YouTube. I am Daniel and we are back with another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about one World Cup star that your club needs. I've had this video planned for a long time and because of that, the scripts had to change quite a bit. In the first version of the script, I had Gakpo going to Manchester United. But we're here again to sit down and discuss one World Cup star that your club needs. Before we do get into the video, please make sure to like the video, comment down below and also subscribe to the channel. Go over and follow the Instagram and the TikTok, Daniel Talks Football on both. Right, let's get started with Brighton. Now, the player I've said that Brighton needs is En Naziri. Now, personally, I think that Brighton do need a striker. Welbeck's getting older and Dennis Undav just has not worked out. And I really do feel that, you know, En Naziri would be the perfect guy here. Obviously, he was a big part of that Moroccan side in the World Cup scoring two goals. Now, it didn't particularly work out for him. Well, it hasn't worked out for him at Sevilla in uh, La Liga so far. So, 25 million, 20 million, you could slap down on the table and you could pick him up. I'm sure Sevilla would be willing to let him go. You know, a couple of years back, you were looking at a 50, 60 million pound move for him. This obviously hasn't worked out. And ever since the talks of that move, he's not been excellent in club football. However, in the World Cup, I thought he was really, really good for that Moroccan side. So, for me... I think the Seagulls need to go and slap 20, 25 million down and bring in N Naziri. Next up, we have Wolves. And for Wolves, I'm going to go for Sutar. Now, I initially actually had Ramos, Gonzalo Ramos down here with Gakwe against United. But Wolves obviously then ended up getting uh, Mateus Cunha. So I felt like that need for a striker wasn't wasn't first priority anymore i still feel like they need another striker but i don't think that needs to be first priority for this transfer window now they've got cunha the center back options at wolves don't fully convince me collins seems to be all right but apart from that i think they can do better so for me i look at it and i think suit would be a perfect option here i thought he was good for australia in the world cup and i think it's time to get it done he'd be coming in from stoke so, he wouldn't cost too much, you know, maybe 15 million. He's a centre back coming from the championship. 15 million, that's not too bad. So, if you can get Sutar in, I think that would really help strengthen up that Wolves defence. And I think he'd be a really, really good option. Moving on to Spurs now. And the Spurs player I've gone for is Amrabat. Now, they looked at him last January, but they decided to go for Rodrigo Benton Kerr instead. However, now I think they should look to add Amrabat into that midfield. They've got a lot of defensive options there already with people like Basuma, people like Skip. Uh, you've obviously also got Hoiberg in there. You've got Saar. I think it's time to add more of an attacking-minded player. I've said James Madison in the past, but obviously he didn't start for England at the World Cup. So I think Amrabat's the guy to look for here, at least in this video. Amrabat would help to progress the ball up the field, which is something Spurs heavily need to do under Conte because they just haven't looked able to do that so far under the Italian. And I think Amrabat would be the perfect fit to do this in that side, coming from Fiorentina out in Syria after an excellent performance from Morocco at the World Cup. I feel like he's the guy to do it. Next up, we have Leeds. And for Leeds, I, and for Leeds sorry, not Leeds. For Leeds, I have Borna Sosa from Stuttgart. Now, I had a look at Leeds' left-back options. And they look so mid. Uh, if, if any of you are watching, I'm sorry. But you're so mid. Sosa looked quite good for Croatia at the World Cup, I thought. It, in the games he did play, he didn't, he didn't play loads. And I'm not going to put him like he did. But actually, yeah, he played quite a bit, didn't he, in the end? Yeah, he played quite a bit, actually. I was, under, I was underestimating him there. He looked quite good, anyway, for Croatia when he did play. And I feel like it's... It's time someone's got and snap him up. He's been good for Stuttgart for a long time now. A Stuttgart side that hasn't been excellent in the Bundesliga this season. I think I don't think people will mind me saying they're in 16th at the moment. So if you could go out and get Sosa for maybe 15 million, I think he's a solid option to go out and get. You can't really go wrong with it. And I think he could think he could really, really help this lead side to progress. Next up, we have Everton. Now I had a look at this Everton side and they need a lot. I'm going to be honest. They really, really, they, they really, really, they really, really need a lot of players. Now I've gone for a centre-back in the end. 
I feel like they need attackers. However, I had a look at the attackers that impressed during the World Cup. And I wasn't... I didn't feel like any of them fit Everton. So, go out and get an attacker. But obviously, they can't fit into this video. So, I've gone for Strachinja Pavlovic. Plays for Salzburg in league football. But obviously, represented Serbia at the World Cup. Though he wasn't actually that excellent, to be honest, for Serbia in the end. But... He was a solid part to their side that people expected to do better. He played almost all of their three games. I think he didn't. It wasn't short that he played those th all the three games. And I thought he looked like quite a good player. He looks astute on the ball and in a defensive in a relegation battle. Sorry, which Everton are in. You've got to be focused on your defence. You've got to focus on your attack. And Everton have a good defence. If they can help to steady it up a bit more with Pavlovic. Who is only 21 years old? So if you could bring him in for 15 million, if you go down, you've still got a very solid defender there. It just helps steady up that defence a little bit more. If you bring him in, I think your defence is completely fine. And then you can try and go out and bring in a striker, try and go out and bring in a winger. I've heard links of a Langer recently. I think that would be a really good signing. But I think Pavlovic is the guy that they should go for from a team that started the World Cup. I struggled with Everton, all right? Let me off. Moving on to Liverpool now, and I have Enzo Fernandez. What more ne really needs to be said about the guy? I could have chosen him for Chelsea, which looks like a destination where he could be going. I could have chosen him for Man City. However, in the end, I thought Liverpool would be a good place if Liverpool could get him. I don't think they will. However, I do think Enzo Fernandez is a really, really good player, actually, and I really liked watching him during this World Cup. He was excellent for Argentina, obviously, and burst onto the stage throughout the tournament after not even starting that initial Saudi Arabian game. However, ever since then, ever since he made that cameo in that game, he impressed everybody. He ended up winning, what's it called, Golden Boy, I think. And he was really, really good. He impressed a lot of people. He was a, he was a shining light throughout the whole tournament for Argentina. I think if Liverpool can go out and get him, he would really help them to fix their midfield problems. They've got an ageing midfield, an injured midfield. People at Oxley Chamberlain and Cater haven't come off. Henderson's ageing. I feel like somebody like Enzo Fernandes would be an excellent signing for Liverpool, could get it over the line. It looks like Chelsea might be the side to do it, but if Liverpool can go in there late, like they did with that Gakpo deal and get it done, then what an excellent signing it would be. Next up, and we have Nottingham Forest. Now, my initial thought for Forest was to say nobody. Yeah, I feel like Forest fans would get annoyed if I said that. So I am going to say somebody. I'm going to say Sofiane Bouffal. Again, was quite good for this Moroccan side during the World Cup. He obviously came to, was it Southampton he had that spell with in the Premier League before? And did look excellent. He's gone to Anger, and I think he's he's actually been all right out in Ligue 1. You know, this season he's got three goals and three assists for Anger. And in the World Cup, he looked like a quality player for that Moroccan side, as did most players in that side. I feel like he'd be a good addition to this Forest squad if they could get it done. And yeah, I feel like he'd be a... A really, really good signing if uh, if Forrest could get it over the line. Look, um, Maranakis has come out and said that, you know, Forrest want two two new players in January. I can imagine one of them will possibly be a centre-back after Loic Bade returned from his loan and went to Sevilla, I think. So, Forrest are going to need new signings, which I hate saying because they signed 24 players during the summer. But, Bufal, sure. I really, I really don't want to say it because I don't want to recommend Forrest to sign anyone. But, sure, we'll go with Sofia and Bufal. Next up, we have Newcastle. And for Newcastle, I've gone for Kudus of Ajax. Now, if you watched any of my videos throughout the World Cup, especially the early ones when I was speaking about Ghana, every single time I spoke about Ghana, I spoke about this 22-year-old. Four goals and two assists in the Champions League with a further two goals in the World Cup. He's been really, really good. Five goals in the Eredivisie as well. This guy, he can play at centre mid, he can play at cam, he can play at centre forward, and he can even play at striker. Kudus is so versatile, and I feel like he is what Newcastle need. There's been reports, well, Shelby is injured for about, apparently, a prolonged period of time. So to bring in somebody that could, you know, do a centre mid role, could also do a cam role, because obviously looking at James Madison, and could also do a strike role with people like Wilson and Isaac seemingly... Well, Wilson's had his injury problems in the past, and Isaac seems to be fairly injury prone as well. So bringing in a rotational player like Kudus could be really good to you know come off the bench and start when there is an injury. He'd probably cost thirty to forty million off Ajax, but for Newcastle they can easily get that done. 
And I think the Ghanaian would be a really, really good player to add into this Newcastle side. Chelsea. Now, I've already mentioned Enzo Fernandes, who could possibly be going to Chelsea. However, I didn't want to rewrite the script again. So, I'm picking somebody different. And we're going for Josco Guardiol. Now, again, a shining light to that um, to that Croatian side during the World Cup. They looked at him during the summer and according to Fabrizio Romano, they sent off a £90 million bid, which in, which then included loaning Vardio back to Leipzig for the 22-23 season. Leipzig rejected this because they want more than £90 million. So this would be an expensive deal to get over the line, possibly looking at around £100 million. He hasn't actually been excellent in the Bundesliga this season, I will be honest. His stats look fine, but when I've watched him on the eye test, he hasn't looked particularly excellent. However, in this World Cup, he did. He really did look really, really good. And I feel like he is the guy that Chelsea should possibly go out and get. He'd be a really good signing if they could do it. And obviously, he'd add extra quality to that defence. A defence which you've got an agent, Thiago Silva, in there. People like Chalaba and... Well, even Fafana hasn't particularly looked excellent throughout all, at all times throughout the season so far. I feel like... I feel like Vardy would be an excellent season. An excellent season, an excellent player to bring in for this Chelsea side. So if they could get that over the line, I think that would be a really, really good thing to get done. Moving on to Aston Villa now. And obviously Unai Emery's Aston Villa. I sat down and I thought about this one quite hard. And I was quite torn on who to go for. However, there's a man who scored one goal and one assist for France this World Cup. And his name's Adrian Rabiot. Now... Don't kill me, Villa fans, but I actually think this would be a good sign. Look, he's got six months left in his contract. I don't know what the wage demands are. In the summer, we had really high wage demands for Manchester United. If they are the wage demands, don't touch him. Yet, I feel like Rabio shouldn't be expecting that kind of Manchester United move. A move to a club like Aston Villa, you know, the bloke's 27. He's entering the prime of his career. He wants to be playing week in, week out. He's not going to get a move to a big six Premier League club. You know, he's already done PSG. He's not going to stay in Italy, probably. Bundesliga won't pay the wages. Villa will actually pay quite high wages. You could easily probably get 100 to 110k a week for somebody like Adrian Rabiot at Villa. Obviously, they signed Morgan Sanson a few years back, and that's a move that hasn't worked out. So I feel like adding a bit more mid midfield depth into, into that squad would be a good idea for, for Villa. And I feel like Rabiot would be an excellent player to do that. He hasn't looked great with Juve throughout the season. But in the World Cup for France, he really, really stepped up and looked like an excellent player. So if Villa could get this one over the line, then I feel like it'd be a a top quality signing and would add a lot of a lot of quality into that squad. As I say, the wage demands and obviously his agent, his own mother, is a uh, is a tough one and they are obviously hard negotiators. But if you can get it done, then I would definitely do it. Moving on to Southampton now. And the man I've chosen for Southampton is Waturu, Waturu? I don't know. Endo from Stuttgart. Again, as I already mentioned, Stuttgart, they're 16th in the table. So they are currently in that relegation playoff spot. Somebody like Endo, he's 29 years old. Southampton do need some depth into this squad. They don't have the depth there at the moment or the experience there at the moment. So, to, you know, you look at that midfield. I know you've got Ward Prowse, but apart from that, they've got a very young midfield, a very young defence, a very young attack of players that are actually playing week in, week out. To bring in somebody like Endo, 29, you could probably get him for 10 million, to be honest. He wouldn't cost too much. It'd be some much needed experience. And in games, if you're not playing Ward Prowse, or if you want to bring somebody on late in the game, Endo would just help to be a solid defensive option in that midfield, just help round out games. He could be the difference between staying up and going down. I really like him. He was a good, a really good cog to that Japanese side throughout the World Cup. He could be the difference between staying up and going down for this Southampton side. So if they can get that done, I would highly, highly recommend it. Next up, we have Manchester United. Now, as I've already mentioned, I actually had to change who I'm going for United. Initially, I said Cody Gakpo, and I said Cody Gakpo like halfway through the World Cup, actually. But obviously, uh, Liverpool had different ideas, shall we say. So, that one can no longer happen. Instead, I've gone for a Portuguese man, and I've gone for Gonzalo Ramos. This is a guy that dethroned... Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo in the World Cup scoring three goals and getting one assist those three goals obviously coming in one game after Cristiano Ronaldo was benched for the Portuguese national side 
Ramos, he's been really good. It was really good at the World Cup. He's been good in Liga Portugal so far this year, scoring nine goals and getting one assist, obviously, for Benfica. 21 years old. He's young. Obviously, they need a striker after letting Ronaldo go on a free. And Gonzalo Ramos is the guy to get in. Spend 60, 70 million. Spend what you need to spend because they need an attacker. And I think Ramos is the guy. He can lead this line for 10 years. And Gonzalo Ramos, he... he oh. It, 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 it fits like a glove, it really does. So for me, yeah, Ramos is the guy to get in. Next up, we have Leicester City. Now, this is a guy that kept two clean sheets at the World Cup, made 25 saves, seven goals conceded, was one of the best goalkeepers in the World Cup, and nearly put him on my team in the tournament. Bayern Munich have been rumoured to have an interest, however, that's been confirmed that that isn't true following Manuel Neuer's injury. And it's Dominic Lavakovic. Danny Ward is not good enough. Danny Ward will never be good enough. The game versus Liverpool last night, that first own goal, Ward, Ward needs to be louder for that first own goal. Ward, and there was a chance about the game as well where Ward just kicked it from the Liverpool players. He's not a good enough goalkeeper. Get rid of him. He's not good enough. Lavakovic is the man to bring in. Throw 20, 25, 30 million at Dinamo Zagreb because this guy is a top quality keeper. He can be there for 5, 10 years. He's only 27. That's young for a goalkeeper. And please just bring him in because Danny Ward is not good enough. And I'm, it upsets me. I've got to keep watching him play for my side in Leicester because he's such a bad goalkeeper. Right. Moving on to Fulham and I'll stop ranting about Danny Ward now because that bloke has caused, caused me utmost amount of pain. Fulham, we have a man that I don't have stats for, I don't have anything for, apart from the eye test, and it's Buchanan. Buchanan, however you pronounce it. I thought he was really good for Canada, especially in that Belgium game. That Belgium game that they deserved to win. He had pace, he was looking really good going up and up and down that right-hand side. Not like a good player. He's not too old, he's 23, 24. Fulham needs something new. Their first, their starting 11, sorry I've got the hiccups if I pause, that's why. Their starting 11 is good, but I feel like Fulham could do with extra options to come off the bench in Buchanan, Buchanan. He's the guy to do that, he would be a good option to bring on for 20-25 minutes, 25 minutes at the end of a game. He could torment the opponent's defence with his pace. It would probably cost 15-20 million to get him from Club Bruges, but that's not too bad. And he's just a solid Premier League player, so yeah, go out and get Buchanan, Buchanan. Moving on to Arsenal now, and I think everybody knows that Arsenal need a midfielder. Now, it's another player for Morocco, this one, and it's Azadine Unahi. <laughs> everybody knows Unahi at this point. Nobody did before the World Cup, but now we're out of it. Everybody's looking at Unahi. There's rumours today as of recording that Leicester have sent off a £20 million bid for him. I think that will be rejected. I can imagine the anger are probably looking for 30 35 after their initial investment that they spent, which was, you know, cheap. They'll be looking for a big mark upon him, and I think they will probably get that. Unahi was excellent throughout the World Cup, and everybody's really seen what he can do now. You know, he's 22. Clubs are going to be careful with him. You know, could he be one of those classic, I don't want to say classic World Cup flops, but, you know, a player that goes to the World Cup, does really well, then comes back and doesn't allow that same player? He could be, and I'm not denying that he could be. But Unahi's the guy to get in. And if you can spend 30, 35 million, which Arsenal can, he would freshen up that squad. He'd be a good option to bring off the bench in games and really help them chase that Premier League title. Next up, we have West Ham United. Now, I was looking at this West Ham squad and there was one position that I really wasn't convinced with. West Ham's right backs. They're just not good enough, are they? Like Ben Johnson is fine. But Kufal has been mediocre throughout the season. I feel like getting somebody new in there would help them. And the guy I've gone for is Celtic's own. It's Juranovic. Obviously really impressed with Croatia throughout the World Cup. Yeah, won a lot of duels. Duels in the top 30. Duels, one of all players in that World Cup. 12 tackles won as well. That's a really, really high number for a right back. I think he's the guy to get in. And... 
he would really add a lot of quality to that West Ham side, a West Ham side that is obviously currently fighting relegation. He wouldn't be afraid to get stuck in, and I feel like Josip Juranovic, he would be a really quality addition to this West Ham side. Probably wouldn't cost too much either, 10, 12, 15 million. He's coming from the Scottish League. Players won't cost much from the Scottish League, they never do. I feel like Juranovic would be an excellent signing if West Ham can get over the line, and that is the player I think the Hammers should sign. We have four sides left now, and the first one of these is Crystal Palace. For Crystal Palace, I've gone for a US international, actually, and his name is Weston McKenney. McKenney's move from Schalke to Juventus hasn't particularly worked out. He hasn't played loads for, for Juventus this season, really. He's, and to be fair, he, actually, he has actually played more than I thought, now looking at it. But he hasn't impressed. Nobody in that Juve side has really impressed. He was good for this US side. And I feel like Crystal Palace could do with an extra body in that midfield. They obviously lost Conor Gallagher. Port brought in Czech Decore. But he is obviously a little bit more of a deep, deep holding player. I feel like bringing in an extra centre mid would help this Palace side. Just to just to help tick things over. He's young. You know, he's, he's, he's still only 24 somehow. And he's the player that West Ham... Uh, West Ham? Nope. Crystal Palace should be looking to bring in. It would really help Patrick Vieira's side. And obviously Vieira could help progress him as a player himself a lot. And I think that would probably be quite appealing to McKenney. So for me, yeah, Crystal Palace needs to go out and sign Weston McKenney. Next up, we have Manchester City. Now, the player I think Manchester City should sign. Not sure if any of you will have heard of him, actually. His name's Jude Bellingham. Um, three goals and two assists in the Bundesliga. You know, he played for uh, he played for England in the World Cup. You know, one goal, one assist. He's a bit of a rookie. Jude Bellingham's excellent. I'll stop messing around now. Jude Bellingham is absolutely excellent. If Man City can get this over the line, it's a signing that will propel them to the next level. They probably do need another midfielder in there. Gundogan's contract is up at the end of the season, and I haven't heard anything about new contract talks. You may have just missed that, but I haven't heard anything. So, City have money. Look, Bellingham would cost an arm and a leg. You'd be looking at, especially middle of the season, you'd be looking at probably 150 million. Go and get Jude Bellingham. Send in a bit of 100 million and just see what Dortmund say. There'll be a lot of suitors for him in the summer, and I think now's the time to get him if you want him. Moving on to Brentford, and the guy I've gone for Brentford is another Japanese player, actually. It's Daichi Kamada. Now, Kamada's been playing for Frankfurt so far in the Bundesliga this season. Seven goals and three assists in the Bully. Obviously, in the World Cup, he didn't get any golden problems, but still looked quite good for that Japanese side. He ticked things over nicely. He was a solid player. You know, for this Brentford side, who could be losing Ivan Tony. Apparently, he's now injured as well. Kamada, he can play at attacking midfielder. He can probably also do a job at striker. So, he's a player that you could bring in to play at striker while Tony is out. And then when Tony comes back, you can drop him back into that attacking midfield area. It doesn't look like Dam's guards performed as well as everyone expected him to, as well as everyone expected him to, sorry. So to go out and bring in Kamada, it'd be a top quality signing. And then last but not least, we have the uh, Michael B. Jordan's club. It's Bournemouth. For Bournemouth, I've gone for Orsic. One goal and two assists for Orsic for Croatia in this World Cup. Everybody's known about Orsic for ages ever since he obviously scored those goals against Spurs. He's 30 years old now, playing for Zagreb. This one won't cost too much, maybe £10 million you could probably get Orsic for. It'd be a quality addition to that Bournemouth side that just had some extra, some extra quality, some extra, you know, bit of talent they don't have at the moment. Yes, he's 30, but it'd be a bit of experience and... Uh, this shouldn't be the only signing that Bournemouth wants to make in January if they do want to stay up. Be a, be a, but he would be a quality addition to that Chevy side. Who does your club need from the World Cup stars? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll catch you all again in the next one. See ya!